Hello, my name is Rex Benincasa, and this is my Rex Makes a Drum video. This cylindrical, two-headed, rope tension drum can rightfully be included in the category of drums called tabers. The word tabor has as its root the French word tambour, which simply means drum, particularly the snare drum or the tambour militaire. Now, you might ask, why would anybody make a tabor? Can't you just go out and buy one? And the answer is, yes, of course you can. I bought this one a while ago. It sounds great, but it's too big to take on airplanes, even if I did have a hard case for it, which I don't. So, I took a look at the three rope tension drums that I already owned, and I said, I'm gonna make one of these and it's gonna fit into this case right here. After thinking about what I needed, I took some measurements, made some decisions, got online, and gave some people a shout. I want this instrument to be finished and ready to play in three and a half weeks. I'm gonna use it for a concert series of Spanish Baroque music with Apollo's Fire in Cleveland. I contacted Precision Drum Company to buy the shell. I described my project idea and the size of the drum to Gary Fulci, the president of the company. He had some recommendations about the thickness of the shell and what kind of bearing edges would be best for a rope tension drum with natural skin heads. His expertise and guidance was very welcome. I said, okay, I'll take the eight ply color maple drum shell, 15 inches in diameter and 13 inches deep with radius bearing edges on the top and the bottom and it's gonna need the special cut because the 13 inches is not a standard measurement. Got it. Thank you very much. Very helpful. Yeah. Six zero Plaza Street East apartment. The shell arrived within just a couple of days. Perfectly done, beautifully sanded, with no finishes of any kind, just ready to work with. Okay, let me see. I want to stain this with Moorish teak flavored wood stain. Here we go. With a rag, I gave one light application to the inside of the shell to see how it looked. I let it dry overnight. It looked good. So I did the outside too. In the meantime, I ordered some wood hoops, leather pull tabs, and heads. The heads are from Earth Tone. They arrived within two days. They're goatskin heads and were mounted on aluminum hoops, just like common plastic heads. Very convenient. These earth tone heads have a great feel and a nice natural warm tone. To disguise the modern aluminum hoops, I applied tan masking tape all around. After all, I wanted the drum to look like a replica of one from a long time ago, so I didn't want the aluminum to show. The masking tape was an easy fix. I got a pair of 1 and 7 8 inch maple wood counter hoops and leather pool tabs from Cooperman Fife and Drum Company in Vermont. The hoops were available glued or unglued. I ordered them unglued so I could do it myself. When I first got them, their tapered ends were taped together to hold them in a circular shape. As Soon as I took the tape off, they sprung apart because they were unglued. I used the drum shell and head to help me measure the right amount of overlapping for the ends. When I got the hoops the right size, I held the ends in place with one hand and marked it with a pencil so I could line them up again later. After getting my C-clamps, little wood blocks, and rags ready, I put wood glue on the surfaces that needed to be joined, bent the hoops, matched my marks, and worked really hard to hold the hoops with that slippery glue in place with one hand while getting the blocks and clamps in place with the other. A second pair of hands would have been very helpful, or a web strap with a ratchet cinch. But I did it my way, and I must say, it was a character building experience. After gluing the hoops and letting them dry overnight, I drilled the holes for the rope to be laced through. Using a 7 16 inch bit for my 3 8 inch rope, I drilled at a slight angle, not 90 degrees, so the rope would go through the hoop in a straighter path with less resistance in binding. After drilling eight holes in each hoop, I cleaned up the sharp edges with a file and sandpaper to minimize wear on the rope. 
The next step was to shape the outside edges of the hoops. I didn't want a 90 degree edge, so I used a small wood plane to take it down. I also filed smooth grooves on the inside edges of the hoops, where the rope was going to run from the inside of the hoop and over the top. I hand rubbed the completely stained shell and the hoops inside and out with wood conditioning, tongue oil. Two light applications, well worked into the wood, gave everything a nice glow and helped to bring out the wood's natural grain. I wanted a single gut snare on the bottom head. A peg which was to function as a snare strainer and a gut snare were supplied to me by my friend and Labella Strings Endorser, Dennis Chinelli. I had to redrill the peg because the hole in the peg for the gut strand needed to be on the outside of the drum shell as opposed to the inside of a peg box. I was careful not to crush the peg with my clamp while drilling. I also had to drill a hole in the shell for the peg. Drill, 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 drill. Before drilling, I had to decide what part would be the front of the drum and what part would be the back of the drum. I wanted to keep the shell seam away from the audience and I wanted to put the peg where I could get to it. I thought about this thing before drilling, and I was careful not to drill the hole too large. I used a small bit and a small file. Because the peg had to fit snugly. To make it easy for the gut snare to be applied to the head or loosen the retract from the head, it needed to move freely, so I filed a small notch on the inside edge of the bottom wooden hoop to allow for the smooth passage of the snare, otherwise the gut would be pinched between the hoop and the collar. I bought a 30-foot coil of sisal rope from a hardware store and soaked it overnight in brown fabric dye. After rinsing it thoroughly, I let it dry. The leather pull tabs are the Civil War model that Cooperman makes. They came in a natural light tan color. I polished them with Cordovan shoe polish to give them a purplish maroon hue. At that point, all the components had been measured, glued, drilled, filed, sanded, stained, oiled, colored, and were ready to go. I tied a neat knot on the inside of the bottom hoop, took the rope up the side, threw a leather pull tab through the first hole of the top hoop, over the rim, back down through the same pull tab, and into the next hole of the bottom hoop. And that's one pass. I did the entire drum like that and gradually seated the head, being careful to take out wrinkles as they appeared. A lot of small rope adjustments were necessary. It's not like mounting a head using tension rods that are all mechanically independent of one another. You need to constantly keep the head seated evenly and only have slack rope at the end of the line. Then you can tie it off and wrap the remaining rope around the bottom. I got it finished. I tuned it up and let it sit for a while. Then I took the tension off the heads and put it in the case. I used it for the first time a couple of days later in Cleveland. The instrument sounded great and is a blast to play. Well, thanks for watching and many thanks to these fine companies for their excellent products and great service.